Hey, First Baptist Concord. My name's Sam. I'm one of the pastors here. And I just wanted to share an encouraging thought with you today. Uh, you know, middle school is probably everyone's favorite time in life. Like, we all cherish our time in middle school. But, man, for me, you know, my last name is Midget. All right? So imagine your middle school experience, only you have the last name Midget. I know that you're just signing up right now to go and relive those glory years of your life. Man, it, it was tough. I mean, the thing that I was known for was my last name. And, man, when I was in middle school, I wanted to be known by anything or for anything other than my last name name. I would be, I would have given anything to have a different reputation, a different thing to be known by. And you know, I think that for all of us, even as we've moved past middle school and past high school and all of that other stuff, how we're known and what we're known for is a big part of our lives. I mean, we think about that. We wonder, I mean, what do people think of me? What do people know about me? What do people think when that, when my name comes up? And you know, God, our Heavenly Father, He has something that we want to be known for. We should want to be known for. Let me read you from Genesis chapter 6, a story we all know. It's the story of Noah. But Genesis chapter 6, 13 says this, God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. God looks at the world and sees all the sin and everything that's going on and all the just problems, and he's grieved, and he just says, hey, I'm going to hit reset. I'm going to start over, and he comes to this man named Noah, and he says, hey, no, I'm going to send the flood. We're going to start this thing over, but I also want, I want man to continue on. I'm gracious, and so he says this to Noah in verse 14, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Now, this is maybe the craziest thing God asked somebody to do in all of the Bible. I mean, here's what he's saying. He, hey, no, I'm going to fill the whole earth with water. I'm going to flood the whole world, and you're going to be saved, and all of mankind is going to continue through you because you're going to build a boat. Now, Noah doesn't exactly like live next to the ocean. He lives in the wilderness. This is a big thing to ask, and, and look what God says about it. He goes on, and he gives some like dimensions and some specifics of what this ark is supposed to be like. Make rooms for it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to with 18 inches at the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm reading you all those stats about it to show you this. This is a big boat. I mean, God didn't come to know and just say, hey, build this little boat, you and your family. No, this is something huge. And like I said, he lives in the wilderness. And it's not like Noah could just run down to Home Depot or Elder's Hardware or something. No, he had primitive tools he had to use. It would have taken him a long time. As a matter of fact, people that are a lot smarter than me have gone through and looked at this and, and estimated that it might have taken Noah up to 120 years to build the ark if he gathered up his family and used the primitive tools that he had. Now, I don't know what you think about your job, how much you love your job, dislike your job, but can you imagine doing the same job every single day for 120 years? That's what Noah embarks on. And so he's out there, he's getting up every day, he's working on this boat, he's working on this ark, he's building it. And just think about this for a moment. Every day, people pass by him. People that he knows, people that he's friends with, people that live near him, and they see him going out there and building this boat in the middle of the wilderness. And you know, some of them had to come up to him and be like, hey, no, why are you building this boat? Like, what are you doing here? And he would have told them, I'm building this because God told me to. I'm building this because God's going to send a flood. I'm doing this because this is what God told me to do, and I trust God, and I'm doing it. It's like a physical representation of Noah's faith. I mean, if you want to think about it, Noah's faith is on public display. Everybody sees him out there building and working and making and, and this boat that he's doing because God told him to do it. His faith has this physical representation. His, it's on public display for everyone to see. Imagine for just a second that uh, he decides to take a week or a month off. Just gets, you know, he's tired of swinging the hammer, needs a real relaxation, and so he takes some time off. Don't you think that people would have wondered, like, hey, does, does he still believe? Does he still trust God? Does he still think this is going to happen? Did he lose his faith? Why? Because that boat, that ark, was this physical sign of his trust in God. And here's why that matters for you and for me. Because so often today, we can take our faith and put it just something private inside of us that our faith is just between us and God, and our faith is just something that's for us, and it's not really supposed to be out there to get in other people's faces or other people's business. But God, 
He's showing us through the, the life of Noah, hey, our faith should be on public display. The thing that we should be known for is followers of Jesus, followers of Christ, followers of God. And that if we have faith that's out there, if people, when they look at us, they see our faith, that's what we'll be known by. Uh, Pastor John Mark has been doing this series called Kingdom Culture. And one of the things he talked about this past weekend was just, hey, what if we, through this virus and through this pandemic and through this quarantine, we moved our faith from just being something on Sundays to being everyday Christians, that our Christian faith was part of our lives every single day. That, that, that's what happened to Noah. His faith became something that he did all day, every day, that it was his life. What if our faith was on public display in the way of Noah? And not that we're going to all go out and build boats, all right? But what if we did things and we lived our lives knowing that, hey, our faith should be out there for others to see? And we became in that way everyday Christians. So let me pray for us. Father God, I thank you so much that you sent your son here on this earth because you loved us and you wanted to repair our relationship with you. And that he came here and he lived a sinless life and he died on a cross and he came back to life so that we could have forgiveness and that we could have a relationship with you. Not just so that one day when we die, we could spend eternity in a real place called heaven, as wonderful as that is, but even more than that, we could live a life today that's all about our faith and our trust in you, that we could live our Christian life every single day. And so, Father God, I pray that First Baptist Concord, we'd be a people that our faith was on public display that when people saw us and the way we lived our lives and the way we talked to people and the way we treated people and the way we loved people, they would see you in us. And in that way, our faith would be on public display the same way it was with Noah. And I ask this in your name, amen. Hey, I know that summer has kind of just gotten here and it's kind of weird. It does feel like summer for some of us, but for some of us, we're already out on the lake and doing all the summer things. But hey, in our student ministry here at First Baptist Concord, man, we've got something exciting coming up in the, in, in the month of July. We've got our student camps. We've got Wild Week. It's for incoming sixth through eighth graders. So if you're going to be in middle school this fall or if you've got a student that's going to be in middle school or you got somebody in your family, man, we would love for them to be there. It's July 23rd through the 25th. It's at Fort Bluff Camp. It's just about an hour and a half from here in Dayton, Tennessee. Man, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have the blob it's on the lakefront where we've got a water slides. It's going to be a great, great week with tons of middle school students. We would love for your middle school student to be there. And then if you've got a high school student or if you're in high school or if you know somebody in high school for incoming freshmen through just completed 12th grade, we've got Beach Week, all right? That's July 27th through the 31st. We're going to Destin, Florida. I feel like I, there's nothing else I need to say because it's in Destin and it's at the beach. But let me, let me just tell you, it's going to be an awesome week. We've got a great band, a great speaker. We're going to do some great late nights and fun stuff all week. We would love for your student to be there. If you want to find out more information about that, you can go to our website, fbconcord.org slash camps. And that's got information about both Wild Week for uh, middle school students and Beach Week for high school students. And so we would love to see you there. Man, I hope you have a great week. And this is a good, encouraging thought to get your week started.